Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna now talk about the disconnected pattern, which actually relates to some of the things you may have worked in the past related to how we store and work with reference tables. But again, uh, for our purposes today, we'll refer to this as the disconnected pattern. Let's take a quick look. Um, oftentimes, uh, you're gonna find with, of course, ensemble modeling, that you're gonna have linked relationships between hubs and at a certain point, you recognize that some of those hubs that you're relating to are more describing the concept that you're relating it to versus having some kind of a business relationship with it. So in this case here, you can see, we have a, a customer and a customer class. Now the customer class here was an important enough core business concept that they felt, the business felt, this should be its own core business concept. And even if it is its own core business concept, we can instead look at modeling it by taking the value of the customer class itself. So let's say the customer class types, or customer types in this case, were um, small, medium, and large. Uh, so if I knew that I was gonna classify my customers as a type of either small, medium, or large, yeah, that's probably not too complicated. I can understand what that means. So on this alternate uh, view here, alternate approach, I actually put the customer type code right into the satellite itself. So now what's happening is that the hub says, hey, I'm a customer, and oh, by the way, here is my type. I am medium, or whatever the, the type is. Now, the table itself that kept information about the type codes, we may want to control those domain values, make sure we keep them in sync once in a while. So we may want to keep it in the warehouse, but we keep it in a disconnected section. Let me take you to the whiteboard and I'll show you what we're talking about. Okay, so in the same example, uh, we can see here we've got a customer. Um, they are connected to a customer class and then the class is described in the satellite. So this is basically the, the pattern we're working with. If instead I said, well, let me take a satellite, put it directly on customer, let's put it here. And on the satellite, I'm just gonna put the actual uh, customer type or class. So let's say customer class uh, type, whatever, whatever it is we're using here, okay? Um, and I attach it directly. Now that's, of course, gonna keep that information closer, but it's also a simpler model. And what ends up happening is I eliminate this link. This link just literally goes away. It's no, no longer part of the model. And I don't have the relationships here either. And I take this combination of the hub and the satellite and I just put it somewhere else. And this is the point is it's in a disconnected pattern. It's somewhere else in the model, no longer where it used to be. But I maintain the same hub sat combination somewhere else. Just it's not connected and wired into the rest of the pattern, but it is within my EDW. It is inside my warehouse itself. So you can consider this kind of a, a separate area in your warehouse where you keep reference style or disconnected table concepts. And that's, that's what we're using this for. Again, you can imagine it cleans up the model a little bit, makes it easier to use. And as we get into another session, we'll talk more about the idea of context close to key. We'll get into that a little bit in, in one of the next sessions. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, so um, as we we're just showing on the board, you can see that what you see on the screen now is actually gonna be uh, the bottom right here. It will actually be just in a disconnected pattern area. If you're still having trouble contemplating how this works, think of postal code. Postal code is one of those things where we would definitely not put that as a hub in a, in a postal master and then wire it to everything where postal code exists. We actually know that the postal codes have a postal master that keeps information about what the code means, but we always just put that postal code in a satellite directly attached to whatever we're describing. So that's just another example. So here's a broader picture you can see, a broader picture that shows here's a core model at the top, and then below it are some of the reference style disconnected pattern type tables. Now, in this case, we're using country code and postal code, nationality, just a couple examples. You're also gonna see in this picture something interesting happening where one of these things got moved up. And what that, what that one happens to be is uh, something like gender code, something that might have been 
easily understood with a couple of values, now has 70, 80 values, not as easy to understand. So it got promoted, it got promoted to the core pattern. And that's one of the reasons why it's important to keep your disconnected pattern table structures also vaulted or in an ensemble form, because that way you can promote them if that business case comes up. And you can also look at demoting some later if you don't need to have them wired into the core model. So those are the two. So when can I use the disconnected pattern? Well, it's pretty straightforward actually, because there's just two rules here. And one of them is that the code has adequate meaning on its own to convey the needed context. So in other words, if I say customer type large, that's all you need to know. You don't need to go look it up and say, what does large mean? It's, it's already self-descriptive enough. So that's one of the first rules. The second one is you don't need to join to it, to that disconnected pattern downstream for deliveries more than 5% of the time. And I think it's important that it's not 0% because sometimes you may want to sync up all the postal codes to make sure they're accurate, do just kind of a quality check. Sometimes you want to make sure that you're only using customer types that are actually valid in the domain values, but it's, it's an exception case. So it's just once in a while you might connect to it. As long as it's not more than 5% of the time, it still works great as a disconnected pattern. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about context next to key in the next session.